Hello, I'm Katherine Artinas. Thank you for joining me for this short video using the Weld and other cool tools. With this being February, there are many Valentines and decorations that I've seen with scallops. Which got me to thinking, how might we do this in Perfect Embroidery Pro? Certainly, we could bring up our grid, use our artwork tool, and create humps, if you will, that can be turned into our scallops. I'm simply clicking and dragging. Right click to end. I'll use my shape tool and select all of the tops. Right click, turn them to smooth. And this gives me the look of a scallop. However, this is rather limiting as the grid points might not be in the proper spot for the shape we are using. Instead, I'd like to show you the process using the Weld tool. We have three shaping tools found when we right-click on two selected objects. The first that we see here, a blue rectangle and a red circle starting out, those are our shapes. If we select both of them and do a Weld, it's going to merge two selected objects together, as you see here in the blue. If we use the shaping tool called Intersect with those two shapes, it keeps the overlapped portion of the two selected objects. In this case, that inner quadrant of the circle right up here. If we use the Trim shaping tool, it is going to remove the overlapped portion of the two selected objects. You can see in this picture, I've dragged the circle away so that we can see the part that has been trimmed. Let's set the stage here with some shapes on the screen. We're going to create a perfect circle. Come up here to my artwork tool, choose the ellipse. I'm going to hold down the control key on the keyboard as I drag to give me a perfect circle. Selecting it, I want to check out the size. I actually wanted a 0.4, so that was pretty good on my part. I need a number of them, and yes, I could copy paste, but let me remind you of your repeat tool. With it selected, I'm going to come up here to repeat, click on that. I know that I want one across and five down. The other thing that I'm going to do here is to use the vertical distance and set this at a negative 0.01. I need the, these circles to be slightly overlapping. I'll go ahead and do an apply and I see this overlapping right here, which is what I need. I'll go ahead and OK, and here are my five circles brought to screen. The other thing I'm going to do is to come over here to the ruler and click and drag and set a guideline at zero. I'm then going to come to the top ruler, click within the ruler, and drag down another guideline set at zero. My five circles are still selected. I'm going to click on those and drag and place them right on the center of that line. I can check my work because each of these circles are still individual circles and artwork, and you see that I have placed the center X in the center of those crosshairs. Before I move on, I'll come over here and turn the navigator on, move my blue box down. I want to select the bottom three circles do a copy paste. I'll drag those over here out of the way. I'll turn those red for right now so that they're a different color. If I need to choose any of my blue circles, I've made it a little easier for myself to do that. And now we're going to start the weld process. You may remember that to do a weld, we have to have two selected objects, not one and not three or four, and not all of them, we have to weld two objects together. So I'll click on the first item, hold my control key down, click on the second circle, right click within, come down to shaping, which gives me the three shaping tools. I'll choose weld, and you can see right here that they have welded together. If I scroll up a little bit with our navigator, you can see that those two now make one unit. All right, that one unit is selected. I'll hold down my control key and select my third circle, right click, shaping, weld. Same thing has happened. I might scoot out just a little bit here on my navigator 
With this selected, I will hold down Control, select my next circle, right click, Shaping Weld. Remember, once this is welded together, it's considered one object. So all I need to do then is hold down Control, select the next object, right click, Shaping Weld. All of my five circles have now been welded together. I'm now going to click and drag another guideline to come down to the center of this bottom circle. I can tell that it is in the center. The reason I'm doing that is to help with my square. We're going to create scallops around a square, so let's get a rectangle artwork. Once again, if I hold down my control key while I'm dragging, I'm going to get a perfect shape size, in this case a square. I'll start up here at the corner of my guidelines, click and drag, and I'm simply dragging down to the bottom guideline. Because I had that control key held, I know that this is a perfect size square. I'll select it, and I'm going to change the color to green. I use my guidelines a lot to help with accuracy of placement. They're very easy to drag down off the ruler, and you'll see in a moment how very easy they are to remove off of your screen. My square is selected. Now what I want to do is to select the welded five circles, do a copy, paste. I'm going to click and drag and place those over to the side. If I want a little help with placement, I can go ahead and click and drag down another guideline that touches the top of the circle right here. If we need to scroll in a little closer, Using our navigator, I can see that it touches, so all I need to do then is to make sure that this touches as well, and it does. Looking to my center point, I'll move down, and if I wanted, I could go ahead and click and drag down another guideline at the bottom to make sure that placement is as it should be. So that looks good. Remember on our navigator we can come over here to fit and click on that and I will see the entire screen. If I want to make sure they're in perfect placement across from each other, I could also hold down control and select the second one, come up here to our vertical center align and click on that. Let me now select my three circles I've set aside. Come up here to rotate. I'll click once, twice to rotate into a horizontal position. I'm going to place those right in here. And do you see the beauty of that guideline? I have given myself an option as to making it very easy to make sure that those circles are aligned with the other two side ones. The other thing I want to make sure, can you see right here? I need to make sure that they are overlapped. This one on the right hand side is, but this one on the left hand is not. So let me take that and move that over just a little bit and see if they are big enough to overlap. If not, I can grab that side arrow and just move it just a smidge. Remember, they have to be overlapped or at least touching to be able to weld. Once again, let's start the weld process. I'll click on the first one, hold down Control, click on the second, right click, Shaping Weld. This becomes one object. Hold down my control key, select that third one, right click, shaping, weld. All three of those are now welded together into one unit. Let me back out here on our navigator. I'm going to do a copy paste on that top circles, drag those down, and once again, because of that guideline, I've given myself a nice way to guarantee placement just touching that bottom line. I've overlapped here just a little bit, and if I need to see on that side, I'm overlapped here. So now what we want to do, this is one unit. Remember the sides are one unit and the top. To help you see this just a little easier, let me come over here to my ruler, right click in ruler, remove those guidelines. We just have our square, and then the two side pieces and the top and bottom. The bottom is selected. I'll hold down Control key and choose the right side. I'll do a right click, Shaping, Weld. This is all now one unit. If I select the middle, hold down Control and click the outside, right click, Shaping, Weld. I now have one unit. You'll notice too that the colors go away. It will always take the color of the 
major unit that you are welding. With this now one unit, the only one that is left is this one right here. So I'll hold down Control, choose my outside, right click, shaping, and weld. We now have all of our circles welded together and our inside square. Before I go any further, I'm going to save this. So we'll do a file, come down to Save As, make sure it's in the folder that you want. We'll give it a name, Circles Welded. And we'll save that just in case anything needs to be changed from this point forward. I'm going to back out just a little bit here because I'm going to click and drag and do a copy paste of all of these. I'll use my navigator to scroll out just a little bit so I can see them nicer. And I want to show you two options that you have for your scallops. We have both of these selected. If you're not sure, come back over to Sequence and we see that we have the circles that are welded and the square that we have drawn. I'll make that red. If I do a right click shaping weld, the same thing we've been doing all along, you can see that it merges those two objects into one and we have outside scallops. If you want inside scallops, Let's select both of those items, right click, shaping, and this time we're going to choose intersect. Remember that intersect will keep the overlapped portion of both of those selected objects. Here with the intersect, if I select it and right click, convert to complex fill, you can see that it will fill in those scallops on the inside. I'll go ahead and bump my density down just a little bit. If I were to select this one, remember this is what we did with weld, and I do a right click convert to complex fill, it fills the entire unit. It does have scallops on the outside if that's the look that you're after. I'll do an undo because what if we wanted the scallops to look just like the intersected one where just the scallops are filled in. In this case, we would need to create another square. Again, I'm going to hold down the control key while I drag my square. I will select both of these items, come up here to our center align so that I know that it is even all the way around the square. Both of those items are selected. I come up here to combine. So I have made that one unit. Now if I do a right click, convert to complex fill, you can see we have created the scallops on the outside of the design. We'll turn on realistic preview and you now see the difference. Remember this is weld. The red one is where we put the center inside, did a combine, and weld, and the blue one to get the scallops on the inside is to use your intersect shaping key. Now let's up our game a bit with a more intricate shape. We'll use a heart. Clean screen. We're going to do the same procedure. I'm going to start with my artwork, ellipse, hold control down, and draw a circle. Select it so I can see what size it is over here under properties. I do want this circle to be a 0.5, so I'll up that just a bit, apply it. We're going to go back into our repeat key. This time I want 1 across and 10 down. I don't need to do the vertical distance overlap in this case because we're going to be placing those circles individually. Here I have 10 of them. I'll go ahead and OK. This was really just a very fast way for me to get 10 even circles without doing a copy paste. Let's come up to our artwork tool, get our heart. I'm going to hold down the control key and click and drag. That will give me a perfectly shaped heart. I will select it. I'm going to right click on red to change the color. I also need to come over here to transform and set that size to be a 2.8. I'll go ahead and apply. Set that heart in the center of the screen. I'll go ahead and do a right click on the ruler, do a center origin. I will switch over to sequence view, take those blue circles out of the middle of the heart for just a moment, and then I am going to drag my 
guidelines down from the ruler, one vertical, one horizontal, and that gives me the center portion of the heart. Remember these circles are individual. I'm going to click and drag one to place it at that point and then click and drag one to place it at the bottom point just for reference. I'm not really concerned right now as to the perfect placement of those circles. Let's come back over to Navigator, bring me back into that screen. I'm going to slide in just a little bit so I can see the circles and my heart a little better. Here's a trick. If we select one of the circles, remember that they are individual, they are not grouped. You notice that with any selected object, the X is always giving you the center mark of that item. I'm going to put my hand right on that X drag my circle over and then I'm using my hand knowing that that's at the center X. If I position my hand on that red line and let go, you see that I have put the center of that circle on the red line of the heart. So it's very easy for me to place these circles. I'll do the second, select it first so that I can see my X, put my hand on the X, drag over, I'm looking at two things here. First, to make sure that I overlap that circle just a little bit, and then the hand is on the red line of the heart, and I let go. That looks good. I'll do the same. Select, get that center portion, drag over, overlapping just a hair, watching my hand on that red line. You can use the navigator to move up. Select the next one, get that center point, position that ever so, and I simply keep doing that with my circles. And you can see that this is not difficult. If I'm using the tools that PEP gives me, move that over just a hair, I still am overlapped. I want that right on the line there. I'll select the next one, get that center point, overlap them, bring my hand on that red line, and drop that into position. I will select it, get my center X, drag that X right back over on the red line, overlapping just a little bit, and then here is my last one, overlapping just a little bit, getting it on that red line, and there I have the side of the heart. I'll drag that out just a little bit, come down here, drag this one out just a little bit, because what we're going to do, if I like the placement of all of these, you see where that's not overlapped, so I need to move that over again before I go through my procedure because the next thing we're going to do is to weld them. And I'm, what I'm doing now is taking a look and making sure all of my circles on that heart are overlapped, and they are. So we begin our weld procedure. I select my first item, hold down Control, choose the second, right click, Shaping Weld. This is now one unit, selected, hold down control, get the next object, right click shaping weld. Move up a little bit here and you can see that all those are being welded. Control key, select, right click, shaping weld. It's the same procedure that we're going to use all along. The right click brings up the shaping. This is now one unit, holding control down, I get that next one, right click, shaping weld and so forth. I like this navigator. It's very easy for me to move around without doing a couple of clicks and moving buttons and so forth. Right click, shaping, weld, and then finally the last one, right click, shaping, weld. All of that side now has been welded. We know that these are going to be the half scallops when we're finished. Let me back out and see the whole of the design. This one item is now selected. Let's do a copy, paste. It's right on top of each other. I'm now going to use my flip horizontal to get the mirror image and then drag that over onto the design and drop that sort of where I think it belongs. And once again, I'm going to use the tools that I have coming up to the ruler, dragging down that guideline, putting it at the very top here of this circle. And what that does is allows me to get right in. You can see that I'm a little high. I'll drag that down so they match. 
I'm also judging the distance from this circle to this one. I know that these have to be in the middle, so I can move over just a little bit, perhaps watching that line up at the top. And then if I want to check here, I simply can drag the navigator down to the bottom and drag another guideline down from that ruler, and I see that I'm just a hair off, so I'll come in closer. Now what I can do is take this bottom circle, drag it over until I'm happy with the shape. I want it overlap just a hair. And if you're off a bit, either on these two scallops matching or down here at the bottom, not to worry, you can see my center is off just a hair. Remember this is scallop, so if there's a slight difference between them, no one will notice when it stitches out. I have my bottom center selected. I'm going to hold down the control and choose the right hand side do a right click shaping weld and I can see that now that bottom circle is part of it while I'm here this is selected I'll hold control down and choose the other side right click shaping weld and now both of those sides have been welded to the bottom let's go up and do the same for the top I need to grab this circle and drag it into position again remember they need to be overlapping just a hair on both sides for this well to work. Again, I'm off just a hair. I'm not going to worry about that. Let me come out just a little bit so that I can see, making sure how many I do have selected. I have just this one selected, holding control down. Remember now that both sides are all welded together. That is just one piece. So I can select on that, right click, shaping weld. We'll back out. Come over here to our ruler, right click on the ruler, remove the guidelines so that you can see what we have. I'll back out just a little bit more to 100%. Both items are selected. I'm going to do a copy paste just to refresh on what we did earlier. Let's move this one over here just a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Both of these items selected. We'll click and drag these items to get our scallop. We do a right click shaping weld and we have the scallops on the outside. Because I know that I'm going to make those scallops on the inside, this red heart is the size that I want. I certainly could draw another one and make it a 2.8, but I'm going to click on just the heart. Come over to sequence and notice I have just the heart. Do a copy paste, drag that second one over here. I can then select both of those items and do a combine. We do a right click, convert to complex fill. We have scallops on the outside. While I'm thinking about it, I'll go ahead and bump my density down just a bit. For this other, remember if we select both, right click, shaping, but this time do intersect. That's what puts the scallops on the inside. We can do a right click, convert to, complex fill. So there you have a weld feature and an intersect, depending if you want the scallops on the outside or the inside. Just for fun, we could select both of those and put them together and you have that kind of heart. Very pretty. I'll do an undo because we're going to use that red heart in just a moment. At this point, I would do a save as again not knowing where I might want to go with this, I would call it hearts filled and save that design. Let's put a message inside of our scalloped heart. So we'll come to a clean screen. Let's do file, come up to import true type text. I'm going to type in capital L O V E. I am leaving the Arial font. I'll go ahead and do an OK. Here we have our word. It is artwork because I am going to manipulate it, size it, maybe play with the points. So I did not go into our digitized fonts. I'm choosing the artwork. Coming up here to our properties transform, I'm going to make the height two inches. Apply, that makes everything else the size that I need. I'll go ahead and adjust the screen so I see all of them. And now I'm going to stay with the L and bring the O, placing it on the inside of the L. So I'm going to bring down a guideline at the top and place a guideline 
at the side of the L. So now I've given myself the area in which the O needs to rest. So first I know that I want it this tall up to the top guideline because that's the top of the L. And then I'll grab just the side handle and bring it inside that guideline. The O is where I want it. I'm going to bring the V in. I know first of all that it needs to be narrower and probably a little shorter. So I'll do some of that manipulation before I bring it over. I'm also making sure that each letter overlaps. So here we have, uh, before I go any further, let me make sure that O is overlapping just a hair on the sides and bottom to that L. Now with my V, I know that I want it shorter and maybe a little narrower so we get the tops of those V's in. And I'm making sure that it's overlapped here at the bottom just a little bit. See what it looks like if I bring it taller. I have a little of overlap there on both sides and down at the bottom, so I'm good. Let's grab that E. This one I might want to scoot in a little closer. I know that this guy has to be a lot smaller, so I will size that proportionately. Bring him over. He's going to sit right inside the top of that. I'm going to size him a little larger now. And there's no right or wrong here. I'm just playing getting those handles sizing as I need to overlap the top. Maybe make it a little taller and I know that it's overlapping here and just here by the side. I may or may not want that to overlap because I might want that to define the edge of the E. But all of those are now overlapped. With each of them in there, I'm taking a look again. Overlap here, here, here all with the top of the V and the E, I can go ahead and right click on my ruler to remove those guidelines. And now I'm going to do the weld process. So we'll take the E, hold the control down, choose the V, right click shaping weld. We see that that's now one unit. Hold my control key down, select the O, right click shaping weld. That's one unit. And finally then, Control key, select the L, right click, shaping weld. My word love is all one unit. I now can do a right click to do a convert to a complex fill. I'll bump that down to a three density, come over here and right click on my red, turn on my realistic view. And here we have it set in the tatami. We could leave that if you like the look of that. I'm going to come over here and play. My two favorites are either brick, I like that, or sometimes I play with corn as well. And I think I like that better. So let's back out just to be maybe 100% and we can see our word. This is all one unit. If we want to, we can do a right click come down to Utility and ask it to create border. Remember the difference between border and outline? Border is also going to give me the lines in the inside of the lettering as well. Let me change that to a different color so you can see. We'll scroll in just a little bit so you can see that on the inside of all those letters, I also have that run stitch. If I had chosen outline, we would only have it on the outside and not on the inside of these letters. All right, here's our word. We'll go over and get our hearts. I'm going to select the red one. Let's do a copy. Come back over to our next screen and do a paste. I will change my love to a different color. I'll put it on orange with a right click, but then if I click on orange and go pick a pretty pink and choose that, make sure that I have both my love and my run. I'll change run to be pink as well. So now I select both items come up here to our center align. It has placed love in the center. I'm going to select both of those first and do a group since I might be moving them around. So I'll position and maybe just a little bit sizing so that I can position. Sometimes the center origin is not where you want it as far as visual. In this case, I like it better up just a little bit. And if I wanted to, I could size 
the love out just a bit to fill out the middle of that heart. So there we have two tricks with our welding. If you wanted to take this a step further, because at the moment we just have stitching on fabric, but if you wanted the inside of this heart to be an applique, we're going to create another heart. So I'll come down here to heart, hold my control key, click and drag that perfect size heart. I am going to change the color so you can see it. Remember that we sized that heart originally to be a 2.8. We'll go ahead and apply, drag that over and place it on the heart. Just that screen just a little bit so we can see. And now it's inside the heart. I might want to make that just a little bit bigger, maybe a 2.9, just so that that outside of the heart is where I need it to be. I'll drag that down just a hair because the scallops are going to stitch over the applique. If I was making this a true applique, this shape would need to go to the start of the list. So I'll come to move to back. It will be a run. So I'll do a right click, convert to run. That will be my placement for the applique. I'll need to do a copy, paste, change the color, I'll put it to yellow, and then this yellow one would be the tack down stitch. They are in the proper position. You can see that we have the placement, the tack down, then the letters themselves will stitch, and then the scallops. If you want to see what this would look like, I can have that tack down heart selected, come over here and put some fabric in it. So again, you can take a preview of the look of that. We'll okay it, and this is what your applique would look like if you choose to do the applique. If not, let me just hide by clicking on the eyeballs over here. You can either have it stitch out just on fabric like this, or you can go ahead and add those two extra hearts in the first positions to set yourself up with an applique. Pretty much fun. I like the weld key. I talk all the time about the cool tools that are in PEP, and I want to take just a moment to show you how many tools we've actually used up to this point. In doing just the scalloped edge with a heart, we've used the guidelines on the ruler. We've held the control key down to get perfect shapes when we drag. We've used the repeat key for multiple zeros. We've done the weld, copy paste, certainly. We've used the flip horizontal to get that mirror effect of both sides of those scallops. We've done a combine so that we can have the scallops on the outside. We've done a convert to complex fill also have used the intersect. So you see that with Perfect Embroidery Pro, the more you play with it and the more you start to use some of these things all the time, they're in your head and there to use when you are doing your new project. As a refresher, remember to get the scallops on the outside of your shape, you're going to do a weld. To get the scallops on the inside of your shape, you're going to do an intersect. We could stop here, but there's a little something for those of you that want a bit more of a challenge, and it's this idea, teach peace. We're going to do an open. I already have the letters ready for us on screen for us to use. These letters were created using your file, import true type text. They are Times New Roman bold. We're going to back out on our screen here to about 200% we need to create a rectangle. So I'll use my artwork tool, rectangle, and I will create and drag. Not concerned yet for the size. I'm going to change that in a moment. I am going to do a right click though in on the red so we can see both of those things separately. I'll move this down just a little bit. Coming over here to our properties in transform, I want that rectangle to be a 4.5 wide. I'll do an apply. Here's my rectangle. I'm also going to ask it to be center origin. I'll do a click and drag, positioning those outside of the rectangle for right now. We now want to select these three letters. I'm going to come over to my size and make them one inch high. I'll go ahead and apply that. I'm going to drag those into the center 
If I want to do this quickly, I can just bring over my center mark, get my X and drag that over, and now I know that they are in the middle. I have these again at one inch high, and I'm going to play with the rectangle to give us a slightly different shape. My rectangle is selected, come over to the Shape tool. I have my points right here on center. I'm going to right click and add a point at that mark. Come down here, right click, add a point at that center mark. And then I'm going to click and drag so that it matches the top of the letter A. You can see what I've done here with this rectangle. I've simply given us an envelope shape. Does this look familiar to you? We have played with this before when we are working with our text tools. However, since I want to reshape the letters themselves, I need the letters to be artwork. Therefore, I used the true type text. What we're going to do here is to elongate each of the letters so that they fit in our space. I might be distorting them just a hair, but the idea is to have the letters overlapped and to fill up the space of my rectangle. I will start with the letter E, getting my select tool. And first of all, I'm going to make it larger, taller, and drag it down into this rectangle. And I can see that that looks good. I am going to play with my points and so forth, but I'm looking to see that it fills up the area and also that it overlaps the A just a bit down here. I'll do the same for my C. I'm going to increase the size. I want the height of it to be within. And then I might want to drag the size out just a little bit, maybe grab that A drag that over just a hair, and it just depends on which one of these now I want to make a little bigger so that they overlap just a bit. All right, still overlapping over here on my E. That looks good. I'll bring down the T in this area. Something else that can help me with it, I'm going to get my guideline, drag that down, place it on the zero, and what I've done right there is to mark the center of this area. So placing my T where I think I want it, I will increase the size of that T so it fills up that area just a bit. Looks good there, don't worry about that, the size of it. And now I need to get my P and drag that and do the same. I'm going to drop it a little bit closer to the side, drag and size my P, maybe over just a little bit, because I need this P to touch the side as well. I'm the height looks good. I might come down here just a little bit on the height and just a little to the side. So that looks good too. I know I have a gap here. I'm going to fix that when we play with the letter T. I might size that just a little bit to help me with that gap. And then if we use the navigator to move over, I'll drag the H. The H needs to do the exact same thing, so I will size it larger. Coming over here, I know I'm going to make those touch, so maybe make that H a little fatter, and I can make that C a little fatter. Okay, might bring that down just a hair, so I don't have so much to do here. Dragging my E, and again, you can play with this as much as you deem necessary to get the look. Your letters that you choose to put in something like this might be slightly different than mine. I'm not going to worry too much because the H is going to touch the E, but I do want them to look visually about the same in size. And again, I could move over if I want to center that a little bit. So now that I have all of my letters touching and placed, it is now that I'm going to do the distortion of the letters filling out this rectangle. So we'll select it. I'm going to use my shape key take those points and you can see what I'm doing here now. I'm going to, oops, I've grabbed the wrong one there. I'm going to make those points lay right on the line here. And what I can do with this T, I'm going to grab just those lower ones and drag that down just a bit. Because I have chosen or selected all of that, I am keeping the shape of the T so that I can do this so that I can bring that T all the way over here and maybe make it a little wider so that when I play with my E, 
I can drag him over so they touch. You see what I have done there, okay? I'm making each letter overlap and I'm trying to keep the proportion of the letter itself. If this is a little low and I want this to be as low as the other, I simply select those and drag those down. Again, I want them overlapping. I'll come down here with my P. The P is just a little too tall. I don't need it to overlap that much, so I'm going to come down just a bit. Something else I think I want to do with the T, and I think I'm going to zoom in on this just a bit better to see if I can get the points that I want. I just want this upper level of points, not those two bottom ones. So I have selected all of those. I'm going to drag straight up so that I have increased the depth of the bottom of this P, if you saw what I did just there. All right, let's back out just a little bit here. I don't need to be so close. With this P, I'm going to take my two points, bring them back here, and then I think I am going to do that same trick again where I grab all of these and drag down just a bit. I want that bar here to be a little thicker proportionately. That overlaps, that's going to look good. Let me see what I have down here at the bottom. In this instance, I can take that point, put it back on my line, take this point, and shape it according to the rectangle. If I wanted that bar to be a little bigger, the trick there is I'm getting all of those points and I just move straight up so that the shape of the letter is as it should be. My E becomes a little easier. I simply take that point and drag it out if I want that to be a little longer. And then this point matches the red of the rectangle. If you need to add another point, simply right click, drag that point up so that it takes the shape of that rectangle. Again, I'm moving over for my E. Now the A, I think what I'm going to do is select that A and then move it over just a little bit. I don't need all of that bar touching because the more bar is over here, the more I lose that arc. I'll go back into the shape key and drag the bottom to match the shape of the red re rectangle that we have, that envelope shape. I'll continue to use the navigator to move over. You can see what we're doing here. I don't think I need another point, but I think I'll leave that as it is. That might be interesting when it stitches out. Here's my letter E. I will select it and make it not quite as tall. I'll bring that up here just a little bit so that I can get my points and increase the bar of that E. I know it has to fit over here anyway. And then if I need that extra point to get that arc a little bit, I can do that. Bring that point over to the E. Once again, what we're doing here is we're making the letters fit the shape of this envelope that we have given. Let's see what I want to do here with the H. Perhaps select it and make it a little shorter so that it's easier for me to bring down these bottom bars of the H. Grab the wrong one there. I want them overlap just a hair, so I'm making sure I do that as well. And then this is going to I'll grab the wrong one, so let's do the undo and grab that one here. And I can do a delete that point for the arc, it's not needed. This one I made a little wobbly there. And now let's go up and see what I have here. I'll take this point, drag it up to the top. I'm going to delete that point as I just did at the bottom. Drag these shapes and you can see what we're doing. Once again, grabbing the points necessary to make the arc. Now in this instance right here, I do not have the C touching the H at the moment. I'm going to zoom in even closer for you to see that. So what I'm going to do is select these bottom points all at once. And keeping the proportion, I'm dragging that down so that it overlaps the C. And when I do that, it's not quite as thick. That one looks a little off straight. Okay, bring that up just a little bit. And again, you can play with these as much as you want. Now I have the H overlapping the C. I'm going to move my bar here. This C, 
a little bit too high, I'll select it, drag the whole thing down just a bit because remember that keeps it proportional. Let me real quick look at the bottom. Did I bring that out of proportion here? I'm going to drag that down to my bottom. I'm overlapped and so forth. Again, let me check my top. That looks good. The A needs to come up to intersect that top line. So I'll drag both of those points up using my navigator. I see my E has come out just a bit when I change the size. Not a problem at all. I simply come over here. I probably want an extra point in there. Smooth that out a bit move over, check my E and my T. And this does not matter because they're overlapped and they're going to weld together. I'll change that. And again, all I'm doing is one last moving around on the navigator to make sure that I have my points the way that I want them. If that's a little wonky, I can smooth those out if I want to. And this is the great thing about the navigator. I love it. It's like the pan tool and the zoom tool turned into one very useful tool. Again, you're watching over here where I'm moving this blue and I'm simply checking all my parts of my design to make sure that they are within that red rectangle. And again, if I feel like I need a little bit of a smooth arc, I can add that point. All right, let's back out. We have all of this put together. Certainly, having spent time on that, I'm going to do a file save as. I'll just call it teach because I have some other ones in there with different names. At this point, we would go through our weld process. The H is selected. Control, select the E, right click, shaping, weld. Control, right click, shaping, weld. Control, right click, shaping, weld. And I continue to do this across the letters themselves. And just as we've played with all along, each of those letters are being welded because I had them touching. Let's select all of our welded letters together. Right click, convert to complex fill. Everything fills in very nicely. Let's do a change in the density. We also could come up here. I'm going to go ahead and turn that red. We can come up here and change the pattern. Again, my favorites are either a brick or a corn. That looks pretty good. I'll try my corn here. You certainly could pick either choice that you like. I happen to like that a lot. Our last step is to get the framing around it. I will go ahead and select the artwork. Do a right click come down to utility. I'm going to create an outline for it. The default of 0.08 is fine. I'll OK that. I now want to select both of those, holding the control key down, the inside and the outside lines. To be able to fill that, we have to first come up and do a combine. Now a right click, convert to complex fill. I'll play with my density, and I like the look of that. If we want to change the corners, you can see how they're a little bit rounded. If you like that look, fine. If not, this is what I would do to fix it. I'd use my navigator, come in quite a bit here on the sides, come out just a little bit so I can see it better. And I would drag a vertical and horizontal guideline so that I knew where that corner should be. I have the two set right here. Then I'm going to zoom in quite a bit on that area, select my blue, come over to shape so that my points are there. I need a new point in the middle. Right click, add a point, right click, make that a line, and then drag that square up to the point that I have given myself. If I do an apply, I then can make those corners to a point instead of rounded. Once again, the way I would do it is I have this vertical guideline. I would drag a horizontal guideline so that I know where I want that corner to be. Right click, add a point, right click, make that point a line, and click and drag that to that 90 and apply. And then I have made my corner point. Again, that's up to you. If you like the corner points or you like the rounded or the squared off points, certainly your preference.
right click on the ruler, remove those guidelines. Certainly I would do a save as. This is actually what mine looks stitched out. This will certainly be a gift for a family member who is involved in education. I encourage you to play with weld. It really can give you some interesting looks. Here is a jewelry piece that gave me the idea of doing the same type of thing with our artwork, our true type text, making the heart and then doing the weld. And these types of messages are perfect for all months, not just February when we're talking about our Valentines. Thanks for joining me. Enjoy your Perfect Embroidery Pro.